Hello, students of Cedar Falls High School. You are tuning into the Cedar Falls Tiger Highline, the new show by students for students. The date today is November 5th. First up, we have a story done by Delaney Tate. She's covering a new training method that's being done in the cadet teaching classes. Enjoy. New students use wheelchairs to navigate the halls of Cedar Falls High School. But here's the thing. Neither of them have a walking disability. Meet seniors Brooke Cattleman and Natalie Harris. They are just two of the five students participating in the cadet teaching program a program that allows students to help in the classrooms of disabled students. This particular lesson has proved to be most challenging. It's kind of just like going uphill, up hills, or up bumps, and it's like relentless, and when you hit a bump, you have to push harder, and it just, over time, it wears on you, and every day it gets worse. Nonetheless, it's all worth it. Obviously, it's very rewarding working with the kids, you know, because the, the environment that Miss Frome, the teacher of that class, creates is just a really positive and enjoyable one. But the most interesting experience was where I had to go around in a wheelchair for a week and just kind of, it taught me about a lot of things that people who are uh, physically disabled have to deal with that you don't think about on a daily basis at all. The program is run by special needs teacher Tammy Fromm. Fromm's program is dedicated to giving students the opportunity to understand those with disabilities. I like to teach students about different disabilities. Sometimes what happens is we get so involved in the way our world works that we're able to do everything that we don't realize what it's like to have a disability. And my hope is then in the future maybe they'll have a position that they'll talk about um, building something and they'll stop and they'll look and they'll figure out, hey, is this accessible to all? Can everyone um, use it? Or maybe they'll have a friend with a physical disability and they'll just have more understanding of what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only is it an important lesson, but it is also important to Miss Fromm for another reason. I do have a daughter that has a physical disability, so, um, and many of my students have physical disabilities too, so if I can open the eyes of, you know, people around me, especially young people that might be able to change things for the future or viewpoints or assist others with physical disabilities. Um, I'm going to try to do that. Haley Fromm, Ms. Fromm's daughter, gave her perspective on the cadet teaching program. They're starting to think about things that they've never been forced to think about before and I, that's amazing um, because a lot of the accessibility compliance issues that I have are purely because people have never thought about them before and they're not forced to. So to have something that sort of brings light to that is amazing. Haley is an advocate for disabled students and wants to see change at Cedar Falls High School. As she put it, just because something has a blue accessibility sticker on it does not mean it's accessible. Cedar Falls Community School District is so dedicated to giving every kid an equal opportunity education, every kid, every day. But in the building we're in right now, it's not possible. Um, so I would like to advocate for a new building um, that is a little bit more compliant and not only safer for these kids, but it would be safer and more efficient for everyone. This has been Delaney Tate reporting for the Tiger Highline. We at the Tiger Highline Online would like to congratulate the girls volleyball varsity team on making it to state. Now here's Bella Schlarman covering the regional game that led them there. Tuesday night, Cedar Falls Volleyball Girls took on Waterloo West on their first round of regionals, where the Tigers dominated in all three of their matches, going 25-8, 25-20, and finally 25-6. The girls will now advance to the next round, so make sure you come out and cheer on your Tiger Volleyball players October 28th on their road to state. Yeah, we're feeling good after the win, and we're looking forward to our next game. We're looking forward to staying. Let's go! It's a cold win! Keep following the Tigers on your way to the cell. Congratulations on your win, girls, and good luck. This has been Isabella Sheldon, reporting for the Tiger Highlight Online. To finish up, we have a podcast from Elijah White. Every other week, Elijah, on his YouTube journalism channel, talks about recent events. Enjoy. The 
think it not wiser to keep open the sores of war. Follow the examples of those nations who endeavored to eliminate civil strife. Robert E. Lee. The takedown of Confederate monuments is spreading across the United States of America, including Iowa, specifically in Bloomfield and Bettensport, both in southern Iowa. There are two sides to this argument. Those who want to leave them, and those who want to destroy them. Well, I think you're both wrong. You can't destroy these monuments because as novelist and political activist George Orwell once stated, the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and limit their understanding of their history. We can't just leave them there as a remembrance of our horrible past. It reminds slave descendants of the harsh view of the Confederacy, including Alexander Stevens when he said, the Negro is not equal to the white. He goes on to say that the slave needs to practice subordination to the superior race. This belief has created the mass majority of hatred and xenophobic behavior across the nation. Keeping the statue up as a reminder of people who practiced humanitarian hierarchy. It would be like the current state of Germany erecting statues in the name of Nazi Germany officers or and Adolf Hitler and commemorating them with the inscriptions on those statues. Even Confederate General Robert E. Lee was against keeping open the sores of war. But we can't just destroy them. We need them as a reminder of our painful past to create a painless future. To try to remind us, I propose putting them in a museum. The difference between putting them in a museum and leaving them out in public is that we are preserving rather than praising. We are treating them like history books rather than idols for racists and bigots. You don't have to see the statues if you don't want to. The purpose of viewing is to put everything up into the hands of the viewer. To conclude, I agree with former Olympian a nonprofit organization creator and CEO Peter Westbrook. So much of our future lies in preserving the past. If you have any suggestions of what I should talk about next, leave a comment below. This is Elijah White signing off for Down the Middle. And that is all for this week's episode of the Tiger Highline Online. Tune in next week for another set of news stories. Bye.